Hi, welcome to the fourth part of my 10 part tutorial series Learn C in 2 hours. In the previous tutorial, you have seen how to write a simple function. You may have noticed that a function can return only one value. But if you want to get more than one value out from a function, of course without C out statements. In this video, I will cover how to use pointers and reference variables as parameters in a function to get more than one output. I have created a new file and the basic program structure is ready with hash include io stream using namespace std int main with return zero. Now let's see how reference variables work. So first I create a simple variable int x is equal to five and then I can make a reference variable by writing int m percent y is equal to x so here y indirectly refers to x now we can print these values let's say c out x is x and line and then i change reference variable y to 9 and then print x again so any guesses what you will see in line number 8 and line number 10 as the value of x. Okay, don't worry, I show you the results. Compile and execute. So, here the answer is 5 and 9. I'm sorry if you have thought something different, but you can see here, I am not changing x in any place, but by changing y variable, which is a reference to x, the value of x changes automatically. So that's how reference variables work. Now let's see the same example graphically. So here I'm using the same example I have just discussed. First thing is I have initialized x. So when we initialize a variable, a memory block has been allocated for it. And here I have assigned a value 5. Next, now there is a reference variable y. So again, logically, there should be a memory block assigned to variable y but no this does not happen because this is a reference variable and y does not get its own memory block but it refers to the memory block of x so if we print x we see 5 and now here y value is changed to 9 because y does not have its own memory block so it changes the value of x so both of these variables now point to one memory block. So that's how reference variables work. Now let's see example of a pointer. So we get rid of this thing. So again, let's say I have a variable x with value 5. And then I have a pointer variable y, which is pointing to variable x. Pointer works same as reference variable but it has a different syntax. Pointers are written with asterisk symbol and then we store the address of x in variable y. Address of a variable is written as ampersand and variable name. Another way to define this pointer is we just define pointer y and then say y is equal to ampersand x. So y stores the address of x and pointer y refers to value of x. So please make note of the difference between y and pointer y. y stores the address of x and pointer y points to value of x. So if I print x and then change pointer y to 9 and print the value of x again. So what do you think? What would you see for value of x in line 10? and then in line 12. So let's compile and run. So here, pointer works same as reference variable. So remotely, you can change the value of x to y pointer. Again, it would be easier to explain this concept graphically. I am using the same example. So the first thing is initialization of a variable x. So variable x got its memory block, which has its own unique address. Remember that every memory block has its own unique address. Next step is initialization of a pointer. 
So since y is a variable too, so it gets its own memory block with some address. But y is a pointer and its value is assigned to the address of x. So y stores the address of x. This value allows y pointer to point to the memory block of x. So as we have seen the example of reference variables, y pointer points to memory block of x. So if we change the value of y pointer, which is pointing to the memory block of x, the value changes to 9. So if we print x or pointer y, we will see 9. So pointer can change the value of x remotely. We can use the analogy of television and a remote controller. You can change the channel of the TV by either pressing a button on TV or using your remote controller. Both are same. So pointer can remotely control a variable. Now let's print all other variations of these variables. So if I want to see the address of x, I will write C out address of x which is m percent x and value of y is y. Note that y stores the address of x so both should produce same value. Next I can print value of y pointer which is y pointer and end line. So let's compile and run. So you can see here in line 10 we are printing x which is 5 then line 12 we have remotely changed the value of x through y pointer so now you can see the new value of x which is 9 address of x is some strange values here which is shown in hexadecimal numbers and since y stores the address of x so it shows the same value and y pointer refers to variable x so it shows 9 we can also print the address of y, address of y, so if I run this, so you can see the address of y is different from these address, because y is a separate memory block. So that's how pointer works. I can also show you another way of assigning a memory block to a pointer by simply writing new int. So this way you do not need a predefined variable like we did earlier. Please note that it is very important to link the pointer variable to a memory block before using it, otherwise you will get an error. Let me quickly clean this code to show you how it works. So here, I have declared a pointer, then initialize it to a new memory block, then assigning a value to the pointer. So if I print this value, let me compile and run, you see the value of 9. But if I do not initialize it, and try to assign a value, then it gives runtime error. In some compiler, you will see runtime error. In dev C++, it has returned with some big value. And it is not able to print it. Because once you declare a pointer, by default, it points to unknown random location. Unknown random location. So if it does not point to any memory block, how can you change its value? So this is the last thing about the pointer. Now you must be asking why you are learning pointers and reference variables. As I said earlier, pointers and reference variables are used to get more than one output from a function. So let's see an example how that can be done. Suppose I have a program that keeps students information. So let's say I have student ID, student's name and age. And I have a function void get student info to get student's information. So I want to pass in ID, let's say LID, L stands for local variable, local ID. And then this function should return name and age. When we cover some advanced programming, then you will see you can link this program to a database or a file from where it can get the information. But for now, let's keep it simple and somehow just return name and age. But you have learned function can only return one value. So it is not possible to return more than one value. However, 
reference variables and pointers make it possible. So if I write string pointer l name and int reference variable l age. So again, I want to pass in id and return name and age of a student. So let's say if id is 1, then name is uh, say John and age is 18. Note that L name is a pointer, so we have to use pointer symbol in front of the variable name and L age is a reference variable. Before compiling this, I have to use a prototype. So copy and paste it here. Don't forget the semicolon. So my function is ready, but I'm not calling it. Now, since this function works for id is equal to 1, so I must have id 1 and I want to retrieve name and age. So I must call this function by using get student and id name and age. Note that l name is a pointer and if you recall the formula it says pointer is equal to the address. So I have to use ampersand name and this is a reference variable and we know the formulation int pointer lh is equal to age. So after this we want to print these values. So id is id then name and age. So if I compile this, oops, I should use lid here. Now compile again. It's working fine. Run. So it works. Now you can see here, you can retrieve more than one value from a function by using either pointer or a reference variable. So finally, I have just one more information to give you which is about local and global variable. If a variable is defined inside open and close braces, it is known as local variable, otherwise it is known as global variable. For example, I cannot access this id in here because this id has been defined inside open and close braces. That means it is a local variable and it is not accessible here. If I want to try it out, let's say, that id for which I will get an error which you have already seen so let's do it again and you can see here id is not declared in this scope so the scope is defined with open and close braces but if I move this id on top of main then it becomes a global variable because this id has no scope so if I compile it works fine because this time id is now a global variable. So that's all about this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe to this channel to get more similar videos. Thank you very much.